I miss my clocks. There are plenty of ways to tell time, but there's nothing as reliable and consistent and controlled as a clock. And this is how I used to see myself, or wanted to see myself, when I was working in mental health and parent education. And you know, this is a field where, regardless of the chaos going on around you, and there will is constantly chaos all around you, um, you have to be able to know what's going on and document it in 15 minute intervals for the insurance company. And you know, I bought into it. If you've ever seen those kind of souped up neurotic schedule books they keep at the receptionist desk at the doctor with the lines that go from the top all the way to the bottom, I had one. I not only had that, I had another planner, a prettier one. One was for work, one was for everything else. They were both full. And uh, that doesn't mean I actually made it to anything on time. However, I always knew how many minutes I was going to be late. Seven on average, by the way. I had to really think about it. Uh, until this one home visit. And I am sitting with this child who is so psyched about the box of multicolored pasta I have on my lap that they pick their head up and smack me right in the face. And he, he, was, he was fine. He should be a football player, or maybe not in this case. Um, but as far as I was concerned, there was a scene missing. And next thing I'm aware of, I'm driving home with a detour to the ER because I think my nose might be broken. And my nose is OK. But uh, I had a concussion. And in three months and six months, when I still had a concussion, um, multiple doctors had told me, and I don't know if this is something they teach them in med school, this phrase, but they said, you have to be patient. Think of it like this. Someone has rearranged the furniture in your brain, and you need time to adjust. But what they didn't tell me was that whoever had rearranged the furniture took all my clocks. I lost all sense of time, and I do mean literally. I don't know if I've been standing here in front of you for 30 seconds, or three minutes, or 30 minutes, although at that point they would have played the banjo, I would like to imagine. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for someone who has schedule books in 15 minute intervals, I was unmoored. I was grasping at anything I could find to get me connected, to get me rooted again in time. I had calendars literally in every single room of the apartment. I had more planners to add to my other planners. I had stickers to go in the planners. I had notebooks to try and keep track of things like whether I'd eaten or slept because I couldn't keep track of them myself. And nothing was really working. And the only time that I did not feel the pressure of not knowing how much time had passed, and this was pressure, I had already been discharged from three different medical professionals because I had on the calendar and the planner and the notebook what day of the week the appointments were on, but I didn't know what day I was on. So the only place I didn't have that pressure constantly at the back of my neck was outside. Not hiking, because I used to do that, but now I get lost. I can't do it on my own anymore. But in the garden, in the yard, or at my local CSA or the Pick Your Own. Because the only kind of measure of time you need there is either you can't feel your hands anymore, or you're carrying all you can carry, or all you can afford, or the box truck has pulled up to the stage and they're trying to pack up the produce and you really need to let them go home. So I start spending more time outside because it's the one place I feel happy. It's the one place I feel comfortable. And I think, you know what, this could be, this could be something. So I upgrade from a shady little front yard plot in the middle of the Leopard Woods to a sixth of an acre of loaned land down in Amherst. And I start spontaneously waking up at six in the morning, every morning. And I don't mean setting an alarm because I've decided. I mean spontaneously. I'm awake at six. I don't know why. 
I am a destroyer of alarm clocks, historically. Um, so this did not make sense, but I went with it. I thought, I am meant to be a farmer. I'm purpose-driven, I needed it. So I can't go to formal school with the way my brain works now. My main source of education were things like secondhand farm magazines at the diner near our house. And I'm reading an article on beekeeping over breakfast one morning, and it says, don't use the calendar. Use nature's cues. Nature will give you cues for when to do things. And I thought, nature's a clock. Nature has a clock. Nature's got to figure it out. I'll just, I'll use that. And I took it in the absolute wrong direction. <laughs> I, I ran home and I got out all of my calendars and I got up post-its and colored pencils and lots and lots of graph paper. And I took out every seed packet I owned and I wrote down every number on the back of the seed packet. Um, whether it made sense or not, I'm not sure why I thought height would help me in knowing when to plant something. But I wrote it all down because it all seemed important and I had things color-coded on the calendar with the exact dates I'm gonna plant different sets of things. And six months later, it has all failed. Frost didn't come when the calendar said frost is gonna come. I put things in the ground and they're dead because the weather doesn't care about your calendar <laughs> and because uh, peas don't care if they have a post-it note on April X, Y, Z. Uh, and I'm devastated at this point. I think, well, if I can't do this, what am I supposed to be doing with myself? There's nothing else. So I crawl into bed for the rest of the day, and I think I'm just gonna call it quits on everything. I don't know, sleep for a living. Um, and I wake up at six in the morning, and I'm laying there, and I realize, I think, I figured out what I got wrong because I'm not waking up because it's six. I think technically at this point it was 627 or some weird thing. Um, I'm waking up because the sun is up and it's warm on my face coming through the window and the birds are singing and it's a beautiful way to wake up and it happens to be six. And I realize I've got the whole thing backwards. Nature is its own clock, not mine. And you can't control it. So I try it the other way around. I just get a bunch of thermometers and watch the weather. And last year we didn't have to buy squash. And this year we haven't had to buy tomatoes. And it's getting there. So I still miss my clocks. I need them. It only works so far. But I do have a window. And the view is really nice. And the sun is warm. And the bird song is beautiful, and it's not perfect, but I am learning to be happy with it.